Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Uzair Khan. I am a member of the NCASH team. Uh, here with me today is the one and only Ron Hussein, one of our primary solutions architects. And today's webinar is going to be about NCASH versus Redis. Now, the purpose of this webinar is to make your task of comparing the two products easier and faster, especially in terms of qualitative aspects like features, performance, scalability, data reliability, high availability, and administration. And of course, before we begin, as always, we hope all of you are staying safe and healthy during these uncertain times and taking great care of yourselves. Um, and without further ado, uh, Ron, take it away. Thank you, Zair. Hi, everybody. My name is Ron, and I will be your presenter as far as all the tech details are concerned. So as Uzair has mentioned today, we have a topic of uh, comparing two products which are very similar, but uh, different in a lot of ways as well. So we have NCache, uh, which is our main distributed caching product for .NET uh, and .NET Core applications. And then we'll compare uh, from a feature standpoint uh, with Redis. So we have a lot to cover in this. I am going to go over a lot of technical details uh, from, you know, starting from platform uh, and the technology stack. Then we'll talk about the clustering, how these uh, two products compare in regards to the uh, cache clustering and what are the uh, different benefits that you get out of uh, using these products and in comparison how NCache is better. And then I'll talk about different features. Uh, we'll go feature by feature comparison uh, in regards to different use cases that you can use in, the, you know, use these products in and then how these two products compare uh, from a feature uh, comparison standpoint. Uh, for this webinar, I have picked NCache Enterprise 5.0.2. As far as Redis is concerned, we would primarily focus on Azure Redis. Uh, that is open source Redis 4014. Uh, but I would also give you details about the Redis open source project as well as Redis Lab, uh, the, the commercial variant of Redis. So we'll compare uh, NCache with uh, all of these flavors, but our primary focus would be Microsoft Azure Redis, the hosted model of Redis that you can get in Microsoft Azure. Uh, for any questions, uh, if there are any questions or if there's a feedback, you can always use go to meeting questions and answer tab. And Ozair and I would keep an eye on questions and uh, we'll be very happy to tackle those questions. So please keep them coming. Yeah. Very good. So uh, before we actually get started, uh, I'm primarily going to go over uh, the introductory details about these two products. So why exactly you need a distributed caching solution? So, and after that, you would go ahead and compare uh, different products. So typically uh, it is the scalability and performance uh, challenge that you may be experiencing within your application. It could be your application is getting a lot of data load. And although your application tier is very scalable, you can always create a web form. Uh, you can add more resources on the application tier, but all of those application instances have to go back and talk to backend data sources. And when you need to go back and talk to those data sources, uh, that is where you see performance issues because databases, typically relational databases, are uh, slow in terms of handling transaction load. Uh, there is a performance issue associated with them. And then in terms of, uh, you know, scaling out, for example, if you need to have a lot of, uh, you know, request handling capacity or requirements around that where you need to handle a lot of requests and your applications are generating a lot of user load, database is not designed uh, to actually handle that extreme transaction load. It's very good for storage. That's where you can store a lot of data, but going around, uh, you know, having transaction load on that data is something database would not be a very good candidate for. It would, it may choke down, it would give you slowness and end user uh, experience can be degraded. So you can get an impact on the performance and you don't have ability to increase capacity within the application architecture. Solution is very simple that you use an in-memory distributed caching system like NCache, which is super fast because it's in memory. So in comparison to a relational database or a file system or any other uh, data source, which is not memory based, if it's coming from a disk in comparison to uh, storing your data on the memory in memory, uh, it's going to make it super fast. So first benefit that you get out of it is that you get super fast performance out of NCache. Second benefit is that it's a cache cluster. It's not just a single source. Uh, 
you can start off with one server but uh, typically we recommend that you have at least two servers and you create a cache cluster and as soon as you create that cache cluster it would improve uh, it would just distribute load on all servers and you keep on adding more servers at runtime so you can scale uh, your capacity you can you know increase capacity at runtime by adding more servers and you use it in combination to your backend relational databases as well it's not a replacement of your conventional relational databases and we'll talk about some use cases down the line here's a typical deployment uh, i'm just uh, you know using ncash as an example for now but down uh, the line within this presentation we'll compare how Redis gets deployed and how NCache gets deploy, deployed and uh, what are the flexibilities available even within these uh, products. So for NCache, it's very flexible. Uh, you can choose uh, to deploy it on Windows as well as on Linux environment. Uh, it's available on-prem as well as it's supported in cloud environments. Uh, it's available on Azure as well as AWS marketplaces. So you can just get a pre-configured, uh, you know, image of NCache and, and get started with it. Docker containers for Windows as well as uh, for Linux are available, which you can use on any platform where you need to use this. Typically, uh, you know, your applications, uh, whether they're hosted on-prem or in cloud, it could be an app service, it could be a cloud service, it could be a microservice, it could be an Azure website, you know, any kind of application can connect to it in a client server model and it sits in between your application and your backend database and that's the typical usage model an idea here is that you would store data inside ncache and as a result you would save expensive trips to the backend database you would save trips to the database as much as possible and whenever you need to go to the database you would always go to the database fetch data and bring it into the cache so that next time that it exists and you don't have to go to the database. And as a result, your application's performance and overall scalability is improved because now you have in-memory access, which improves performance. You have multiple servers which are hosting and serving your requests, your data requests. So it's more scalable in comparison. And then there are high availability and data reliability features which are also built into NCache protocol. NCache can be hosted on the same boxes where your applications are running, or it could just be a separate tier in cloud preferred approach would be that you use a separate delegated tier for cache and then your applications are application instances are running on their respective tier but both models are supported as far as ncache is concerned uh, some scalability numbers we've recently conducted these tests in our aws lab where we simulated read and write request load and we kept on increasing load and, and after a certain point when we saw that servers are being maxed out uh, we increased uh, number of servers in the cache cluster. So from two to three servers and then three to four, uh, we were able to achieve two million requests per second throughput with just five and cache servers. And this is not this was not a touch and go data. This was a real life application data, but simulated in our AWS lab within our applications. And the latency factor was also very optimized. We were able to achieve all of this within microsecond latency. So individual request performance was not degraded when we were able to achieve all of this load. Some use cases, and this is something which is common for Redis as well, uh, but I will talk about how NCache uh, would compare. Uh, app data caching, where you cache almost anything that you normally fetch from the backend database. And data exists in, in your database and now you want to cache it so that you save expensive trips to the database. And we've already established that database is slow and then it's not very optimum in terms of uh, transactional load handling. Uh, we have a lot of database synchronization features on this line, but in this you simply connect to NCache and use uh, uh, basically our APIs to make connection, you know, make any uh, data calls to NCache. So you can cache almost anything. It could be your domain objects, collections, data sets, images, any sort of application related data can be cached using our data caching model. Then we have our ASP.NET and ASP.NET core specific caching. That's again a technical use case where you can use it for ASP.NET or ASP.NET core session state caching. Uh, ASP.NET or ASP.NET core signal art backplane and cache can be plugged in as a backplane. For ASP.NET Core, you can also use it for response caching. I distribute cache interface and I sessions through I distribute cache uh, interface. Uh, you know, these two features are also supported within cache. And for legacy applications, you can also use it for view state and output caching. Wanted to toss a quick question your way, Ron. We got coming in. Um, question is Does NCache in Azure support a serverless programming model? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is something that I. 
you know in terms of azure deployment you can either have your applications deployed on servers or your application as far as your application part is concerned uh, you, those could be serverless applications as well you can just include our NuGet packages inside your application and those applications can just make NCache calls whenever they need to they don't even have to have any installation of NCache or have a server set up uh, for as far as application resources are concerned but as far as NCache server-side deployment itself is concerned because NCache is a data source so it has to have a VM or, or set of VMs where your applications connect and retrieve and, and add data into so from service uh, NCache cache server standpoint as a source you need NCache service but as far as your applications are concerned those could strictly be uh, serverless and there are no issues even microservices architecture that's a very uh, common example where microservices there are a lot of microservices there could be an Azure function which is just performing and that deals with a lot of data and that data can come from NCache so you treat NCache as a data source whereas your applications can be serverless and, and NCache is fully compatible with that model Right. Awesome. Thanks. Very good. Uh, then another use case is around PubSub messaging and that uh, revolves around microservices uh, because that is one of the pressing use cases where you can use uh, messaging for serverless applications. Microservices are loosely coupled uh, serverless applications and building a communication between them is a big challenge. So you can use our PubSub messaging platform where you can utilize our event driven async event propagation mechanism where multiple applications can publish messages to NCache and subscribers can receive those messages. Since it's in, based on async event-driven mechanism, publisher applications don't have to wait for acknowledgement or message, messages being delivered. And similarly, subscribers do not have to wait or poll for messages. They get notified via uh, callbacks, via event notifications. So it's very flexible and that's another use case where you can use NCache as a uh, PubSub messaging platform for your uh, applications some more details and then we'll uh, you know talk about the differences between NCache and Redis NCache was launched in 2005 it has been in the market for over 15 years now uh, current version of NCache is 5.0 15th version uh, we have lots and lots of customers NCache is also available in open source edition that you can uh, download from our website as well as from github repository some of our customers you can get a detailed list as well and next we'll talk about how ncash compares with redis and first segment that i have defined and by the way if there are any questions please let me know because we've uh, built some introductory details about the technology in general this is uh, going to be uh, uh, information around distributed caching technology now we'll focus uh, directly on how NCache compares with Redis. And I have some segments that I have formulated. So please let me know if there are any questions. And down the line, while we're presenting different uh, aspects, uh, please feel free to jump in and ask as many questions as you need to. So first uh, section that we have defined is platform and technology. And I've uh, initially mentioned that we're targeting uh, you know, NCache 5.0 point, uh, you know, uh, 2. So NCache 5.0 SP2 is the main version on NCache side. And from Redis standpoint, we, we will be using Azure Redis as a comparison. And we'll also talk about open source and Redis Lab as part of that. Most of these details are common for uh, different flavors of uh, Redis. So coming from an Azure background, if you plan on choosing a product, so number one thing would be uh, the compatibility with the platform. So NCache itself is written in 100% .NET. It's a native .NET or .NET Core uh, product as far as your applications are concerned, All right? So basically it's uh, written in .NET and primarily for .NET applications. And it gets deployed on Windows Server 2016, 2019, even 2012. Only prereq for NCache is .NET uh, framework or .NET Core for that matter. Whereas for Redis, it's written in uh, you know C++ there's a typo here and cache is written in .NET it's developed 100% uh, actually it's uh, C sharp is the main uh, you know technology language that we're using and it's 100% native .NET and .NET Core whereas Redis is a C++ uh, Linux based solution so uh, coming from a Windows perspective Windows background and if you have your applications which are written in .NET 
the natural choice would be to use a product which is also written in .NET so that you're on the same technology stack. You don't have to have a lot of variations within the application development stack. So that is one issue or one uh, difference between these two products. Uh, second aspect is the Windows versus Linux and then uh, you know what is available in NCache and what is available on Redis side. Uh, Windows, from a standpoint of uh, NCache deployment, that is a preferred deployment, but we also have a Linux uh, deployment av available with the help of our .NET Core Server release. So we're fully compatible on Windows 2012, 2016, 2019. Our Docker images are also available for Windows variant, uh, variant of NCache. So you can just download our Docker image and just spin a Windows image of uh, NCache as needed. And we support it fully in production environment. It's an official support. Uh, from our end. Whereas from uh, if you compare Redis, even in Microsoft Azure, the Redis is uh, hosted on Linux. The preferred approach, preferred deployment model is Linux for Redis. The Windows variant is third party uh, uh, project. Microsoft OpenTech has a ported version of it. There is no official support from Redis itself. Uh, the project itself is shared. It's buggy, unstable, and even the Azure Redis, as discussed earlier on, uses the Linux version. And there, the big issue with this is that you don't have an official support from the Redis, uh, makers of Redis, or from, uh, from a standpoint, if you want to use the open source project and you want to deploy it on your own uh, premise, uh, that, that's where you would see a lot of issues. On, as part of this, I would also like to highlight one other aspect is if you're using NCache on premise, and you now want to migrate off from on-premise and you would like to use in Azure, same software works as is. So there's no change needed from moving in cache from on-prem to uh, Azure. Similarly, within uh, cloud vendors, if you plan on uh, using in cache on Azure, you can just migrate off to AWS if you need to, because exact same software is available across the board on all platforms. Whereas as far as Redis is concerned, Azure Redis is a hosted model which de gets deployed on Linux, as far as uh, the backend deployment is concerned, but you, you don't have the same variant available on on-premise. So you have to deal with open source Redis or th some third party uh, uh, you know, provider. Or even you have to go with a commercial uh, variant, which is a completely different product. So the main point that I would like to highlight here is that Redis on-premise, which is open source or some commercial version, versus Redis in Azure or Redis in AWS, which is ElastiCache, these are completely separate products. So there's a transition, there's a lot of change. You can't port Redis from one environment to another without going through some changes. Some feature sets are missing, some APIs are different. The deployment model is completely changed between these products. So there are no changes. If you keep NCache on-premise on Windows or Linux, and now you want to migrate off and go to Azure, it will be exact same product. And if now you want to change it from Azure to AWS, you want to change the cloud vendor, it's more flexible in comparison to uh, Redis. So NCache is a lot more flexible. Linux support, uh, NCache is fully compatible, officially supported, even performance is uh, tested and, and Linux performance is super fast. Uh, as at par with, uh, you know, NCache on Windows. We have Docker images available, fully supported in production, and we have a fully integrated monitoring and management tools that you can, uh, these are web management and monitoring tools that you can access from anywhere. So even your Linux deployments can be managed and monitored as you would deploy and manage and monitor your Windows deployments with NCache. Linux is also supported on Redis, so it's production support, uh, you know, available by Redis Lab. Azure Redis is also hosted on uh, Linux version, so it's supported by uh, the vendor itself. The second aspect uh, after the platform is again the .NET and .NET Core, uh, the technology uh, stack. Uh, we have an official client available. We have implemented it. We fully support it, and if there are any feature sets. Uh, and this is why NCache is compatible across the board. So if you choose on-premise or Azure or AWS environments, uh, you would have the same flavor of NCache and its client available across the board. And if there are any changes that need to be made, we will provide those changes officially because we own everything as far as project is concerned. Whereas for Redis, it's a third party. So for different languages, support uh, coming in from different languages is also coming in from different vendors. So there could be a feature set difference. There could be a release cycle difference. So you have to rely on third party uh, clients as far as technology, uh, you know, as far as client, uh, you know, requirements are concerned. So I wanted to highlight some aspects around NCache being native .NET and .NET Core product. NCache is fully supported on Windows as well as on Linux, whereas Redis is not 
uh, very stable on Windows. It's a third party ported version and Linux support is available. And that's the, so you have to rely on Linux support as far as Redis is concerned. So coming from a Microsoft uh, technology background, uh, this is something that you have to rely on. Second aspect is our cache performance. Uh, that is also a very important aspect. Uh, both of these products are very fast and that's the idea here that main benefit of NCache and Redis. Uh, the main reason that you would choose such a product is the uh, performance improvement aspect. We've already established that databases are slow and they're not very scalable. These products are fast and very scalable in comparison. So I would not take away anything from uh, Redis. Just the Windows version is not stable and there are performance issues. But if you have Linux version, it's also very fast and scalable and it's extremely fast. Uh, you know, as far as NCache is also very fast. Uh, it's very scalable. We have our own implemented TCP IP based uh, uh, clustering protocol, which is very op optimized and, and very uh, robust in, in performance. However, there are some differences here as well. Uh, within NCache, we have a lot of performance improvement features. We have recently done a webinar as well where we tackled six different ways where you can improve NCache performance. If you set up NCache, by default, it will give you very good performance. But on top of it, based on your use cases, you can uh, enable different features and you can further improve performance. And one of those features is our client cache. Client cache is a feature which is unique to NCache. Redis does not have this feature. Uh, it's a client side local cache, which again is possible even for serverless applications, where you can have an in proc uh, copy within your application process. Uh, and or for uh, you know server based applications, you can use uh, an auto process client cache. Idea here is that it would save expensive trips across network to this your uh, to to your cache cluster. This cache was already saving trips to the backend data sources. Now you can have cache in between, and assume that you have hundred items in the cache. If you fetch some items on this uh, on the application side, you know let's say ten items. Those ten items would be brought back into client cache automatically. And next time your application would find that data closer to your application, and as a result it would save expensive network trips. And this is a synchronized client cache. Synchronization is managed by NCache. Any change in the client cache is propagated on the server cache as a must because that's the master copy. This is a subset of the data. And you know that change is also propagated to other client caches as well. If you have reference data scenario, if you have a lot of reads then writes, we highly recommend that you turn on client cache and it would give you a very good performance in comparison to uh, a cache which is running against a database. Uh, we, uh, we've recently done a POC with one of our customers, uh, one of our bigger customers. Uh, where they had a workflow which was taking about 46 seconds with default configurations. And they were making a bunch of NCache calls and, and retrieving data. So it was primarily a read intensive uh, use case. Uh, we turned on client cache auto process. By the way, there are two flavors. You can keep it out process, which means a separate uh, cache process runs on the application box, or you can have in proc where you, uh, the client cache runs inside your application process. In proc does not have serialization or process to process communication overhead. So it's extremely fast, even in comparison to our proc is faster. So with that customer, uh, the workflow was taking about 46 seconds to start off. Then we turned on auto process client cache. It brought it down to three to four seconds. And then we further turned it on, uh, turned on the in proc client cache. And we were able to achieve all of this within four to 500 milliseconds. From 46 seconds to four to 500 milliseconds, that's the kind of improvement we're talking about. And this feature is completely unavailable in any other products or even any other flavors of Redis, including Redis Labs, including open source project and Azure, Pro uh, Azure Redis, which is available. So you can tune performance using our client cache and it's a no code change option. It's just a configuration that you turn on. And please let me know if there are any questions around this. Bulk operations are supported uh, on both side, but with NCache, it's, uh, it, our bulk operations work on entire cache cluster, which means that if you have uh, 10 servers and you have fully distributed data, a bulk call would fetch data from all those servers and a consolidated result is uh, retrieved. So all those work in combination to one another to formulate result and then you get a result which is complete in nature. Whereas Redis uh, uh, bulk operations are on a shard level. So you have to deal with data on a given shard. So that's a limitation if you, you have, let's say, multiple uh, nodes in the cache cluster and you have uh, uh, 
master shards which are available so you would be able to perform bulk operations on a given shard so that's a limitation otherwise this is a good performance improvement feature where you instead of going back and forth for individual requests you send a big request and get all the data at once and as a result you improve your performance Serialization, uh, that's another feature and that's another aspect because most of your time would be spent on serializing and deserializing data uh, and that's true for NCache as well as for Redis. By default, both of these products would serialize and deserialize but with NCache, there is a way to improve your serialization and deserialization overhead. We have a fast compact serialization which would optimize your serialization uh, time which normally your application would take. Your objects become complex so without any code changes you can um, define them as compact types and NCache would ensure that it runs uh, compact serialization on them at runtime and it would improve your serialization and deserialization overhead. Finally we have compression feature as well. Compression uh, is done on the client end. Typically if uh, you know if you have you're dealing with bigger objects let's say 2 MB, 3 MB or let's say 500 kilobytes uh, that's a bigger ob object. So typically we recommend that you uh, deal with smaller objects, but if you have bigger objects, uh, there is a, no a lot of uh, network uh, utilization and then performance also gets degraded. With NCache, you can turn on compression. That is a no code change option, which is not available on the Redis site. Uh, and it would automatically compress items while adding into the cache. So smaller object gets added and transfers between, uh, travels between your application and the cache. And similarly, uh, the same smaller object is retrieved back on the application end as well. Dealing with smaller payload improves your application's performance. So overall application performance would be increased if you have compression turned on. So we recommend any object greater than let's say 100 kilobytes, you should definitely turn on compression. And there's a threshold that you can enable and only bigger objects are compressed, smaller objects are left as is. So all of these performance improvement features, client cache, bulk operations, compactization, compression, either are not available on Redis, for example, client cache is not available, bulk operations are available, but they're limited. There are no sim serialization optimization uh, options and compression is something which is not available. So that's where you have a clear, uh, you know, difference between NCache and Redis, where NCache is uh, a complete, uh, you know, package where we have a lot of performance uh, centric features built into it. Please let me know if there are any questions. Uh, I know it's a lot of information, but please let me know if there are any questions at this point. Next segment is high availability and that's where uh, you would see a huge uh, you know feature set difference between NCache and Redis. Any questions so far? I think we're good. All right so I'm going to continue on this. Uh, high availability is another aspect where uh, these parts can be compared. Uh, for mission critical applications, this is a very uh, important aspect that you need a source. Now you're bringing your data, which normally is in the database. And within database, you would have some kind of mirroring, some kind of backups, right? So with data being moved in a product, uh, you know, which is distributed cache, although it improves your performance, it's very scalable, but high availability is a very important aspect. For mission critical applications, any downtime is not acceptable. It would impact your business and user experience can be impacted. So it's not affordable. So it's very important that your application is always able to get response from the cache where data exists. So here we have a huge set of, uh, you know, feature differences. NCache is a 100% peer-to-peer architectured cache cluster. It's dynamic and self-healing and I'll, I'll talk about how, uh, uh, you know, that works out. But in comparison, Redis uses master slave. So being peer-to-peer -peer architecture, NCache allows you to automatically add and remove servers and it's seamless to your applications. You can go ahead and add as many servers as you need to. For example, you have started off with two servers. Now you want to add third server, you can do that on the fly. You don't have to stop the cache or the client applications which are connected to that cache. Seamless uh, you know, uh, experiences observed. So your applications can continue to work without having any downtime or data loss uh, with our high availability and data reliability features. Whereas in Redis, you cannot automatically add new shards because there is no automatic data rebalancing. That is the core of uh, 
the dynamic uh, nature of our cache cluster. Within NCash, it automatically rebalances data if you want to add new servers. So there are two scenarios. One where you add a new server to bring capacity, to bring more scalability. And the other scenario is that you bring a server down. So let's first tackle the node being added scenario. A new node gets joined. With NCash, your data would automatically be uh, distributed. For example, from two to three servers, if you add two more, you know, so you had six items here and you add another server, existing data would be transmitted to, to you know, de balance to the newly added server. So that server would take chunk of the data from existing servers and that would be done automatically. It's dynamic in nature. So there is an automatic data rebalancing which happens. With Redis, it's a manual rebalancing of data. And this is true for Azure Redis because there are different, uh, you know, set of tiers available in Azure. There's a basic, there's a mid-level and there's an advanced. The clustering only comes into play with advanced tier, which is also expensive one as well. And on top of it, they need at least at the minimum of three servers, which is again a limitation. With NCash, you can even have clustering uh, fully up and running with just two servers. And on top of it, adding a new server requires a manual data rebalancing. That's a big issue. So you, you would have some kind of limitation on the application end when you're planning to add capacity. Whereas with NCash, you can achieve this at runtime. You can add more servers on the fly. Second aspect is a server going down. So we have within Redis, we have a master and slave concept. A master replicates data to slave. There's a slave shard. So master has to replicate data and it, either it can uh, you know, be in sync or async manner. In Redis, if a slave shard goes down, master itself stops. Cluster becomes unusable. So that's a big issue and that can happen all the time. Strictly on uh, on-premise deployments where you have an open source or Redis lab uh, you know, deployment of, uh, of, of Redis. In that case, if a server goes down and that happens to be the slave of a, of an, of a master shard, the cluster itself would become unusable. So you have to get involved and do a manual intervention to recover from that scenario. Whereas within NCache, it's automatic. So any server can go down the surviving node and it could be active or backup, uh, you know, including you know, for example, this server goes down, this, this is an active partition, it also has a backup partition. If this entire server goes down, backup promotes the active. Uh, the, the backup partition gets promoted to active and you get all the data from the surviving node. And there is a connection failover uh, which is built into it. Any server going down, clients would detect that at runtime and they would decide and failover to surviving nodes. And here I would like to reinforce that uh, concept that with, with the Redis, you need at the minimum three servers. There's a the concept of majority rule. A uh, cluster coordinator has to win an election. That is not the case with NCache. You can start a fully working cache cluster with just two nodes and will give you full high availability uh, features. Any server going down, a surviving node is fully capable to work without any issues. That is not the case with Redis. Dynamic configurations, you can change uh, cluster configurations at runtime and this involves adding new servers, removing servers or changing some uh, settings on the cache cluster. Uh, that is something that you can uh, apply on an entire cache cluster at runtime without stopping it, whereas for Redis, uh, it's limited. There are a lot of uh, configurations that you have to manually apply. And then there are a lot of cluster health events which are available on NCash site, which you can subscribe to. You can use monitoring and management uh, tooling on top of it, whereas Redis does not have those features. So this is a very important concept. Uh, let me just sum it up for you. Uh, adding and removing a server in Redis is something which would give you a lot of issues. For adding, data would not be automatically rebalanced. So it's not 100% peer-to-peer architecture. So cache cluster is limited in its capacity. Similarly, if a slave shard goes down, cluster itself becomes unusable because there is a distribution issue, which now you have to man manage manually. Failover is also manual, right? So if a server uh, goes down, you have to manually failover and start using the survival nodes. If you add new servers, it would have to manually shift over to the newly added service. So these are all the limitations that you would have. And, uh, you know, I would be uh, surprised to see using a production deployment of such nature and now you need to bring capacity or you need to bring servers down for maintenance. So that would be very difficult with product like Redis. Whereas NCache gives you a seamless experience where you can add or remove servers on the fly without impacting anything. Now, uh, another concept within, uh, you know, uh, the cluster is the self-healing mechanism. 
and cache has dynamic partitions. You add more servers, data gets redistributed. New partitions are formulated at runtime. Similarly, you bring a server down cluster would make the backup available and it would heal itself and formulate a healthy uh, your two node cache cluster if you brought it down from three to two. And then reliability aspect, it has replication partitions, right? Which also uh, is available on Redis as a form of slaves, but their high availability is dependent on replication. They do not have, you know, with Redis, you would not have high availability if you don't have slave shards configured. So you have to have slave shards available. Whereas with the NCache, we have topologies, for example, partition cache, where we have master shards, master partitions. If this server goes down, you still have high availability because clients would detect that and they would fail over and start using the survival node. They would have data loss, and that's true for Redis as well. Uh, data loss because there's no replication, but it's still highly available. And then we have an enhancement to this where we have replication support as well. If this server goes down, not only the backup of the server is made available, clients automatically fail over. So Redis is limited. Its high availability is dependent upon replication. It's not highly available if replication is not turned on, which is also a limiting factor. And then the self-healing mechanism, though no manual intervention is needed. If you start off with three servers, you bring a server down, you lose active partition, a master, and then you also lose a, a slave of another server. So in that case, server 3's backup was on server 1. So this becomes activated. It joins into the active partitions at runtime. No intervention is needed. Manual work is needed. And then partition, you know, server 2 would formulate a healthy partition on server 1 all over again. So cluster would heal itself automatically. And this is the dynamic nature of NCache in comparison to Redis, where for Redis, uh, shards cannot be readjusted at runtime. Cluster stops if, if, if the slave shard goes down. Uh, the re data redistribution is not dynamic. High availability is dependent on replication. That's not the case with NCache. NCache provides you high availability even without replication. So all of these benefits that you get out of NCache makes it a lot more superior product because these are completely missing or limited features in Redis. And this is true for Azure Redis. This is also true for open source because these are very uh, comparable products. And this is also true for uh, Redis Labs uh, Redis offering as well. Please let me know if there are any questions. Uh, if there are any confusions, let me know. I'm going to now spend some time on uh, you know, showing the actual product in action so that you have some uh, you know, insight into how NCache gets configured. So this is our demo environment. I've been working with it. So I'll just create a new cache. Uh, this is our web management tool, which comes installed with NCache. Uh, mode of serialization could be either binary or uh, JSON. It's entirely up to you. I'll just name the cache and I'll show you how to create a cache cluster, connect a client application and monitor and manage it as well. So I'll keep everything simple because this the main focus in this webinar is around NCache versus Redis. So I'll keep uh, all the details uh, simple. Partition replica, that's our most recommended topology. Async replication between active and backup. So you can choose sync. Async is faster, so I'm gonna go with that. Size of the cache cluster. Then I'm going to specify the server nodes where NCache is already installed. TCP port, NCache is a TCP IP based port, uh, you know, communication protocol. So I'll keep everything simple. And on this, I'll just uh, enable eviction so that cache becomes full. So it automatically removes some items from the cache and as a result makes room for the newer items. Start this cache and finish and auto start on, on service startup. So each time my server gets rebooted, it automatically joins the cache cluster. And that's it. That's how simple it is to configure a cache cluster and then use it, which I'm going to show you next. Any questions? Wanted to toss one your way, Ron. Uh, one of the questions that has come up is, is there a fully managed service offering of NCache? Do we need to manage the cache store VMs or containers? Okay, that, that is something that I uh, was going to discuss as part of our cloud offering. So our managed uh, service model is uh, coming up. Our next release is focused on that, which is I think uh, two to three weeks uh, down the road. 
So we will have a fully managed uh, NCash service uh, software as a service model in Azure as well as in AWS. At the moment, it's uh, either going to be VM model. Uh, if you have on-premise, you, you can use physical or VM boxes. If you choose Azure, you need to uh, either get uh, your VM set up through Marketplace, or you can just set up a VM and then install NCash software by downloading from our website. And then we also have containerized environment. You, we have Docker images and we're fully supported on Azure Kubernetes service, uh, EKS, uh, Elastic Kubernetes service, and any other, for example, uh, OpenShift Kubernetes uh, platform. NCash is fully integrated and fully supported on those platforms already. As far as the manage aspect uh, is concerned, uh, that is something which is coming up. So down the line, two to three weeks from now, it would be fully available. I hope that answers your question. Please let me know if there are more questions. Right, so I'm going to show you statistics window, which is our performance counters. And by the way, these monitoring uh, options are available for uh, NCache, uh, you know, in terms of NCache uh, on Windows as well as on Linux environment. Right, so uh, I'm going to run a stress testing tool. I think uh, there's one already running for another cache. So I'm going to go ahead and run one more. And this would simulate our a dummy load on our cache cluster. You just specify the name and it automatically discovers the uh, servers by using the configuration files and it disconnects to it. So we have fully connected cluster status, request per second showing throughput, latency, by average microsecond per cache operation. Additions, fetches, update, deletes, cache size, CPU, memory. So you get a centralized monitoring view. Uh, you can use this tool. You can also use Windows Perfmon. For uh, Linux based, we have our customized monitoring. So you, you can use our monitoring tool directly for Linux servers as well. And you can also use any third party tool for monitoring and cache as well. So that was a quick peek into our uh, cache creation process some monitoring and management aspects. Please let me know if there are any questions at the moment. So coming back, uh, since we discussed some details, next thing that I would like to discuss is the cloud offering, cloud support. Now, Redis itself, uh, you can choose an unmanaged cache. You can also choose a managed cache and then there's a hosted service, which is available. And managed option is, is from third-party vendors. Hosted option is from Azure Redis, uh, where you can uh, have a, a open source variant of Redis, customized by Microsoft, and that's available as a hosted model. Whereas on the NCache side, we have a cache server model, VM model. I've already discussed container approach. It's fully compatible with Windows as well as with Linux containers. We have video demonstrations available for Azure Service Fabric for Windows containers, uh, microservices architecture details. We have Azure Kubernetes service, which are using Linux containers, EKS, Elastic Kubernetes service. And then I think we've also done uh, Red Hat OpenShift containers through Kubernetes. So those are all container, uh, you know, deployment options available. And and it's flexible. It, it's platform, uh, you know, it's not platform specific. So you can deploy it in any kind of uh, containerized platform without any issues. One important aspect, the managed service is, is coming up. So we already discussed that. So that's something where NCash uh, uh, would have managed service, but that's our, in our next version. One important aspect is that the benefit of using a VM model, although you have to, uh, you know, uh, connect to a VM instead of a service, but you control everything. You can run server side code, which I will cover next. Uh, but the most important aspect is the performance aspect. We already discussed that there are a lot of performance features within NCache which are missing in Redis. If you choose to have Azure Redis, you would have to connect to Azure infrastructure. So those are VMs, those are running in a separate virtual network. They're, these are loco located nearby, but again, they are far off. Uh, it's, it's different than your own virtual network that you have in Microsoft Azure and where you have all of your application deployments. With NCache, you can choose our, uh, you know, NCache deployment on the same virtual network as your application virtual networks are. For example, your app service, your Azure website, your Azure microservices, they are running on a, micro, on a Azure virtual network. You can choose to deploy Azure VMs on the same virtual network and improve your application performance. Based on our, on our own testing within our lab, NCache was four to five times faster than SaaS model of Redis that, that you normally get in Microsoft Azure. So that's a very important aspect that I would like to highlight. 
on top of it you get a lot of control on your vms you have full control on starting a cache increasing the size you get full capacity on there's no limit on request units there's no limit on size there's no uh, you know footprint of usage and you're not being costed as, as as part of that you bring your own license and and that could also be perpetual that could also be subscription license that could be uh, you know very flexible in terms of licensing on top of it, you can run server-side code on top of your NCache servers. You can fully manage this. You can fully uh, optimize this. You can write a lot of uh, interfaces such as read-through, write-through, write-behind, cache loader, and some compute-grade features such as map reduce, aggregator, entry processors. And this is only possible with NCache. Even our SaaS model, which would be hosted model, that would have all these offerings available, which is not going to be, uh, you know, uh, case with Redis. So that's our platform next segment uh, next 15 minutes i would spend on the uh you know feature level comparison and for that i have some segments defined but please let me know if there are any questions at this point um another one uh ron is sure. the question is the upcoming managed service can it be deployed in uh their own vnet i think yes that is a very good question but I will have this confirmed. Uh, uh, this is something that we discussed, but on top of my head, I, I, I'm not 100% sure whether our service would have an ability to be deployed in a VNet within the customer or it would be co-located. It, it, it would just be uh, nearby or it would be within the virtual network. So I will have this confirmed and, and I will send an email on that. Can I toss one more your way? Sure, absolutely. Um, the question is, what is the license model for the client cache feature, especially if they have a lots of pods during peak hours of business? Yeah, that's that's another interesting question, right? So I mean, for client cache, uh, I mentioned that there are two options. One where you have an application on a VM or on a pod for uh, that matter. It could be an auto process. And the other option is that it runs in process. In that case, you don't install anything. So from a licensing standpoint, we have two licensing options. One is a client server where you license your clients and also servers. And the other one is a flexible uh, server activated license. So in that case, you just activate your service and we don't calculate a uh, number of clients which are going to connect to it. You would get you, you would just get a threshold, right? So if you have a lot of clients, I would highly recommend that you use our server activated licensing. So in that case, you can just estimate that I have, let's say, 20 pods, which are going to make connection. And you uh, get the server activated and provide that uh, threshold up front. And NCache would allow you to connect to that. Uh, the idea here is that it's uh, on the client connection level. And one IP address is treated as a, as a client. If you're running multiple uh, you know, pods using the same IP, it would still be treated as a single client. And then there's no capacity issue for a given client as you would see with Redis, where you would have a request footprint or size footprint or some cluster size uh, related uh, limitations. That's not the case. You get complete access and full access without any limitation once you connect to NCache. Very good. So, uh, sorry. Uh, are there more questions? I think we're good for now. I'm um, sorry to keep you. Keep at it. Very good. Okay, so next segment is how to you know compare these pro two products on a feature uh, level comparison. So I'll get started. If you need to keep cash fresh, and that's a very important, uh, you know, there's a, there should be a separate webinar just on this: how to keep cash fresh, specifically in regards to backend data sources, in regards to your application use cases. So, in comparison to Redis. Uh, you know, NCache has a lot of features on this uh, side as well. We have time-based expiration, which is absolute and sliding, and but we have an auto reload mechanism available for that as well. Redis only has absolute and sliding expiration without any reload mechanism. For reloading, we allow you to implement an interface called read through handler, which is a server-side code. Again, that's possible because NCache allows you to give uh, have full access to your uh, VMs where NCache is hosted, so you can deploy server-side code on top of NCache and use NCache computational power to back it up. You can synchronize your cache with database. NCache is very strong on database synchronization. 
we have SQL dependency, we have DB dependency, which is only DB compliant. Uh, we have .NET CLR show procedures. So all these features allow you to synchronize your cache with database. And idea here is if there's a change in the database, a record in the database changes and you had that record cached, these two sources can be out of sync. So with NCache, if there's a change in the database, you can automatically invalidate or reload that data in NCache at runtime. This is a feature unique to NCache. No other uh, products have this feature. So you can have fully synchronized cache with your backend database. And this is not only true for relational databases, we have features on non-relational data sources side as well. File dependency is another feature where you can make items dependent on file. And contents of file, you know, if, if the content uh, changes, you get items removed or uh, reloaded automatically. And custom dependency, uh, you can use it with any source. It could be a NoSQL database, it could be a file system or relational any connector, any web service, so you can be, make items invalidated based on your flexible requirements. We've uh, uh, given an implementation of this uh, dependency with Cosmos DB. So we've implemented synchronization of NCache with Cosmos DB. If you're using NCache alongside Cosmos DB, you can use custom dependency. And I think I've done a webinar on this as well. Handling relational data. So relational uh, data has relationships. Uh, items in the cache are key value pairs so you can make relationships between different items and that's something which is not available on redis site so you would have to deal with items on, on their separate merit whereas with ncache you can you know combine items in a one-to-one one-to-many or many-to-many -many groups item the parent item gets through a change the child item can automatically be invalidated or reloaded as needed Another aspect is data grouping and searching where NCache is very strong and Redis does not have any features. And again, this is true for Azure Redis, which is very limited anyway. The open source Redis is slightly ahead, but it's still uh, limited on terms of, in terms of features. Even the Redis lab, the commercial version of Redis, uh, that is not equipped with these uh, features. So SQL searching is available. You can search items within NCache based on their object attributes. The objects are added in the cache. You can define uh, indexes for their attributes. For example, products can be indexed for their ID, their price, their categories. And now you can run searching on those products by using these attributes. A typical example would be select product where product.category is something or product.price is greater than 10 and product.price is less than 100. And NCache would run in memory uh, searching on all the item, on the, all the servers, consolidate results and would bring you back the results. Right? So you don't have to deal with keys anymore. You retrieve data based on a criteria. Link searches are also available. We have .NET and .NET Core apps. If you're using, you know, link searching, you can run link searching on NCache as well. So that's a unique feature to NCache where Redis does not have any support. Redis, uh, any, uh, you know, all the flavors of Redis uh, do not have this support. You can have group subgroups. You can logically make connect, uh, collections inside NCache. Uh, that's not available in Redis. And you can retrieve, update, and remove data based on those groups. Tags and name tags can be attributed. For example, you can use keywords which can be attached to your items. A typical example would be that uh, you can tag all customers with customer tag. All orders with an order tag and orders of a certain customer can also have a customer ID attached as a tag. When you need orders, you can just say get by tag and, and provide the orders as a tag so you get all the orders. When you need orders of a certain customer, you say get by any tag or get by tag and give customer ID, it would get you all the orders but only for that customer ID. So that is the flexibility of using tags and name tags that you have with NCache. Redis does not support these. Server-side code, we've already discussed that typically we use cache side pattern where you first check data in the cache. If it's found there, you return. If you don't find data in the cache, you would go you know, uh, to the backend database in your application and then fetch that data and bring it in the cache. So there's a null, you retrieve null and then you go to the database. You can automate that with the help of read through handler. It's a server side code that runs on your, on your NCache servers uh, and our managed service would also have this feature. So you implement this interface, which allows you to connect to any data source. It could be a web service, it could be a relational data source, a non-relational data source, 
and there are a bunch of methods which would be called as soon as there's a null found in the cache. So you call cache.get, enable a read through flag. If item is not in the cache, call is passed on to your read through handler. And as a result, you would fetch data from the backend database by going through that handler code, which is your user code running on NCache server side. So seamlessly, you can go through NCache and get the data that you need. Write through is opposite of it, which is also supported. And Redis does not have these features where you can update something in the cache. And now you want to update the database. You can update database by calling your write through handler. You implement and register this write through handler and NCache would call it to update the backend database. And right behind is opposite of it. Any update on the cache, client application returns and NCache would update the backend database asynchronously behind the scenes. So NCache can even improve your performance for write operations on the database, which is not possible with Redis or any other product if you don't have ability to run server-side code. And this is a purely native .NET and .NET core class libraries that you can implement and register as read-through and write-through interfaces, which is possible with NCache. Cache loader is another feature uh, where you can pre-populate the cache by implementing an interface and registering with NCache. So each time you restart your cache, you automatically load some of your important data inside NCache. And this runs on all servers simultaneously. So it's super fast. So you can pre-populate all your data and you never have to go to the database again. You would always find that data because you preloaded it. Custom dependency, entry processor. Uh, you know, these are again features which are only unique to NCache. And the reason, uh, the main reason uh, for not, you know, being able to use these features. Uh, first of all, Redis does not have these features. Modules are not supported in Azure Redis or even in open source Redis. Uh, the server side uh, you know, code is not possible with Azure Redis primarily because you don't have any access to the underlying VMs. And this was the main reason that I was uh, referring earlier on that with NCache on a VM model at the moment, you have full access where you deploy it, how you control it, how you manage it. So you have full control. It's not a black box as Redis is. Any questions? Uh, wanted, I wanted to toss a question that we got. Um, so the question is, so what is a typical number of clients for each instance of NCache? Uh, the person in question has a lot of task processes, like thousands of each instance uh, um, initiating on basis of demand. And would all of these processes share a single client side outproc cache? Like, Yes, that is, that is true. First of all, there's no limitation on how many client processes are connecting to NCache. Right, so you can have, you can spin up a lot of uh, client processes provided you have server capacity to sustain the amount of load that they're generating. So it's based on CPU, memory, and network capacity that you have. So if you have underlying infrastructure there to sustain all the load, there are no limitations as far as NCache is concerned. So you can connect to as many instances from client application as needed. Uh, we typically recommend if you have a lot of application processes, we don't recommend in proc client cache. We recommend that you go with an auto process client cache because that's where you connect all those instances to one auto process client cache. And, and as a result, you don't have redundant copies uh, in case of thousands of uh, you know client processes. So that would be more beneficial where we have a centralized client cache where all the client processes are con connected. It's on the same tier and you still have a clustered cache which is sustaining all your results, all your data uh, requests. So no limitations and our process is the best option in this scenario. All right, thanks. A few more details and then I'll uh, conclude this. WAN replication is another aspect. Uh, Active Passive is supported on Redis where you can transfer entire data center uh, cache from one data center to the other. In NCache, we have Active Passive. So one way transition of data from one data center to the other. We also have Active Active, which is very pressing, very important use case where you may have both sites active. You need site one's updates on site two and vice versa. So that's not an ability on Redis side. You don't have that ability. So you cannot run active active sites with Redis. With NCache, this is true for your app data caching use case where you have data on both sites being updated. And this is also possible through our session, uh, multi-site sessions as well. So that is another space where NCache is a clear winner. Then some other details, caching topologies. We have a huge list of caching topologies in comparison to Redis. So based on different use cases, we have mirrored, replicated, 
partition and then partition replica. And then we already debated, uh, we discussed that how in-cache clustering is better in general. And we have a lot more options in comparison to uh, Redis offerings. Then we have GUI tools. Here's a comparison, manager, monitor. Whereas we have PowerShell tools, we have dump and reload tools, uh, complete administration, monitoring aspects are built into it, whereas Redis is limited on that front as well. And, and as part of that, I've shown you some details, and this is true for Windows as well as for Linux deployments of NCache. Some ASP.NET specific caching features. Uh, I'll just take one more minute. Sessions, you know, we have multi-site sessions, ASP.NET to ASP.NET core session sharing is coming up. Uh, multi-site ASP.NET and ASP.NET core sessions are available. Uh, view state, output caching. Redis only has sessions, which is very basic in comparison to NCache. Session locking, session sharing is part of NCache. Output caching is supported on both ends. And additionally, we have SignalR backplane, ASP.NET core response caching. So all of this uh, makes a complete uh, you know, feature set for your web specific caching requirements. So you can review a uh, feature set in detail. And then we have PubSub messaging, uh, we have item level events, and we have a criteria based event notification system as well, which is far more superior in comparison to Redis. Uh, I have a separate webinar on our PubSub messaging, so I would highly recommend that you review that if there are any questions. So I think I'll conclude at this point. Finally, third party integrations. We have nHibernate and Entity Framework as well. App Fabric uh, wrapper is available. Memcache wrapper is available. So if you're transitioning from those products, you can seamlessly transition to NCache in comparison to Redis. I think uh, let's conclude this, uh, Uzair. Some details on security encryption. And I think uh, we're already on time marker, so it's a good time to conclude it. I mean, right off the bat, I just want to apologize if we haven't gotten to everyone's questions. Uh, we just had a couple more come in. Um, so the first thing is that anytime you guys, um, anytime you want, you can go to elagisoft.com and you can download an enterprise version of NCache and we will personally show you how it works in your environment. So we encourage you go straight to the website, get that 60 day free trial of enterprise. Um, scheduling a demo is going to be, is our pleasure. Um, in addition to that, we will have a recording of this webinar available to you. So please keep an eye out in your emails and on social media when we get that out to you. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, uh, to uh, today, and I know we've had a lot more come in, and we're right at the edge. Please just email support at alachisoft.com if you have any technical queries. We will have them answered for you. And if you're interested in moving along and applying NCache in your environment, um, just you can contact sales at alachisoft as well. And we had a, we had a wonderful turnout today. All of you out there have been uh, so great. Thanks for showing up. Um, and of course, once again, before we end this. Uh, we hope all of you are taking great care of yourselves, um, looking after both your physical and mental health, and please reach out to us. We would love to help you getting in cash started uh, during this time. All right, and thanks, Ron, for a great webinar, and we're looking forward to seeing all of you guys in the next one. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Zara. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, everyone.